us that has one of those albums. And he hears it and goes, yeah, that's really good. And then he goes down to the record shop and he buys the record. But when you're going through that blues band and you really don't know much about it, you know you like blues and you want to hear some blues and you want to own a blues album, uh, you're not going to buy one of those Origins or Belzona albums. You're going to buy one of those chess albums. Mm. That's Or, you know, that's just the way it is. Uh, people just don't hear it. You don't hear it on the radio. Uh, Henry and I tried it in L.A., and uh, we played six hours of blues on a Christmas program mm -hmm. on our little FM station we've got in L.A., which is knocking the hell out of all the pop, top 40 stations. Uh, which and one is that? KPPC. It's the sister, sta sta sister station to KMPA. Actually, that was a plug in from Tom's radio. Right. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, he has a uncle's radio. Yeah, WBUR. Yeah, WBUR. He, had a, he has a blues show every Tuesday night, and like it's one of the best blues shows I've ever heard on the radio, ever. One. Except for the ones that Bob and Henry did in L.A. on KPPC, but this was really a good one. Larry. Tuesday night, they, they have a, he has a blues show, and they would play some good, fine records. One way I think you could say the West Coast is a year or two ahead is uh, that's the first location where the FM stations with anti-Top 40 format uh, became popular, first in San Francisco, where groups like Hendrix and the Cream blues-influenced, instrumental-dominated modern groups that did not have hits on the Top 40 received a lot of airplay, not to mention John Fahey and a little country blues and uh, now in L.A. it's catching on, and it's just uh, starting here in the East to catch on. And that, that's, the, I think, a uh, real upswing in the taste of the average. It, uh, the attention span of the average young listener is increasing. Now, by catching on, you mean it's hitting a mass audience, say, comparable to, to one of the top 40 stations? Or in L.A. it is. It's, ah. uh, it's the, the FM station is uh, now a serious competitor with... Uh, the top 40 stations, and I don't know if it's a direct result, but one of the top 40 stations <coughs> went under and went all news, mm -hmm. and one of the others is falling off in, in listener interest. I find this weird for one very important reason. L.A., of all places, is automobile-oriented, and this is where most of the top 40 get their listenership. Somebody's driving around, mm -hmm. he's got his radio on. Well, I guess how that, does, that how would be true in, in cars, but when they get home at night and... and sit around at night listening, particularly late at night, is it like, say, the 12 to 6 shows, mm -hmm. or to a lesser extent, the 8 to 12 shows, uh, then they turn on the FM. When they can turn on the FM, when they can't, they'll turn on the top for you. Um, at Christmas time in Los Angeles, there was a definite upswing in the sale of FM radios, mm. transistors. Uh, portables. People were buying tr FM radios like uh, there was a disease happening. Uh, one of the things is that I think people people that don't have an FM station to listen to tend to put up with the rock station. People just don't like to hear, all right, kids, top 40, they hate it. You know, it's really a drag to listen to those nope. disc jockeys scream and holler. One way to get around this the uh, AM, FM thing is, uh, particularly on the West Coast, is uh, a really large number are getting tape decks, and they forget the radio completely and buy ten good albums and play tape decks when they're in the car mm. and ignore the radio. You mean, you mean the uh, cassettes? Right. Yeah. Tell me, uh, we've been talking about various blues groups and where canned heat feels it's at and why they're there. Uh, I personally feel that Canned Heat is a very significant blues group, but I was wondering what you people feel is your most significant contribution to what's happening in, in the music today. Do you feel you've made any important uh, any important type of, uh, of advance in music or in putting people's attention to a certain thing or what? Yeah, uh, groups like ourselves and uh, Butterfield are putting blues on, on the album charts. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, I think, is a very major step. Uh, I don't think five years ago you could have put a blues album in the bubbling under section on Billboard. Uh, but today, people are buying it. And Where's and your our album currently? Our album currently has uh, been on the charts two weeks. It's at 100 and... Uh, four. It's been on four weeks. What, where's what's the um, number? Uh, 
106. 106. The first one made 75. The first one made 75 and built, it was Billboard. In record world, it was in the low 60s. What's, what's the highest the blues album has made? Butterfield made 51. Butterfield's gotten to 51 oh. on East West, uh, which I think is a great, you know, a great thing to happen. Uh, that shows you that there are people in this country that want to hear blues. Yeah, I want to add a thing to that. Which is, um, you know, just as a, li as a listener, uh, that can he's done something which I don't think anybody else has done which is to put uh, the post-war flat pick guitar on top of the pre-war finger pick guitar. Right. And that's, that's something, you know, which is, as far as, as far as I know, unique in the field. Henry, Henry is the post-war and Alan's the pre-war. Mm -hmm. that, right. That's another thing I'd like to point out. I think bringing back the drone, as you guys have done, uh, if it ever was gone, is another major thing. Oh, wait, do, you, do, you see, do you, see, uh, do you see other people doing the same thing, following your lead on the drone yet? No. Uh, no. Uh, James oh, Brown. James Brown's past three records have been have, have been a drone. Really strange. Yeah, this is, this is a, one of the most surprising developments in music I've heard in the last six months. Is I really flipped out over the latest James Brown album, which is which is the kind of thing that I previously didn't like at all because I heard about eight songs and seven of them were just a drone. Now, do, do you I, think I think it's independent origination? Now the British groups. Hendrix and Cream approaching it from a different angle. From the Indian thing. Yes, I think that, and from, and in Hendrix's case, uh, blues too, uh, use a lot of drone. So, uh, so I think these things are converging and will create more interest in the drone. Why don't you clarify? Well, I like, well, I like, points, I like the drone is no chord changes. Drone is you, you take five six notes that sound good in the blues and you put it over. By drone, you mean one chord. That's uh, right. Okay, well, catfish on our, our records, chord. the following numbers are drone numbers. Catfish, Dark Road, Rich Woman, The Boogie, and On the Road Again. Those are drone numbers. Okay, you don't mean hanging on to one note or two notes like a tambora. Uh, no, that can be part of it. That. That could, that's yeah, right. That can be part of it. Right. right. You want to say yeah, something, I'd Larry? I'd like to say that, that I think uh, all these new young, you know, white blues groups have never even helped like the old, older cats, the old, the old blues cats that never were, were even known of to be to come out now. You know, like Albert King, for one. Yeah, let's you mention know. Albert King. Oh, wow. Well, I can't say nothing about Albert King except he's, that's the best I've ever heard, finest blues I've ever heard in my life. And that's what I got to say about it. What label is he on? Stacks. Stacks, Albert King. Right. Al? Uh, you have something I think to mention about Albert King that you mentioned to me the other day about that record. Because I heard about Albert King first from you. Oh, it, it was, it's not, it's no big thing. It's just, uh, I spent a lot of time recommending the LP across the U.S. on the basis of the titles I saw on it. And I had the 45s, but the, the 45s are preferable. Although I usually prefer LP, the 45s are preferable because the mixing presents more vivid and wider guitar sound. Yeah, the album sort of falls a little bit flat. Wait, do you have that? Uh, do you have the stereo to play that album in? Yeah, I, I pulled out. If you have the 45, you get the guitar sound. The guitar yeah, is wide. Oh, yeah. So they, yeah, on the album, it's, it's, the guitar has a very, very thin sound. Why do people listen to blues? There are lots of reasons, but what do you think are the most important ones? Why do people listen to any kind of music? I don't know. I'm it's basically likable. Because it's likable. I mean, they're that's always a hard wheel. Why do people listen to blues? Why, well, do, why do people listen to country and western? Why the, the because thing, they like it. Okay, the, 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 the sort of thing I'm thinking about is is that I think a lot of people who are not too much into blues tend to get the impression that uh, you know it's re it's either really inter very introspective or very extroverted and nothing in between. You know, and you listen to it either to cry to or or to dance to. That's propaganda. That's yeah. Propaganda. Okay. Now I wanted I sort of wanted to get your opinion on 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 statements like that. Whether you feel that's really the function of blues, if it has a function. Well, uh, I can't answer that. I really can't. I have to think about it. To okay. Uh, it, uh, as far as uh, blues having a function, if you're playing the blues, it definitely has a function because it's a, a way of expressing yourself. Uh, you know, like you heard this bullshit. You know, white people don't hear right. blues. And that. Uh, hey, you know, I, um, I've had my old lady leave me, and uh, I've had to pay my bills, and, and uh, I've been in trouble. So I, I know what it's like to have the blues. And that, uh, granted, I've never been forced to sit in the back of the bus, but I have been kicked out of restaurants.